third lecture on the on the MMP Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming back. So I'm going to continue from where we left it yesterday, and then I will give some ideas of the methods that we use to prove some of the results. Um, so I will not use George notation, I'm afraid. I wish I could. So for me, X today, I mean, it will be a little bit more, I mean, in order to avoid problem, troubles, I will be a little bit more restricted than yesterday. So tomorrow, for today, X will be a KLT. I will define what KLT means in a few minutes. Um, two factorial, which I will define now. Projective variety over C, which is a field of criteria zero. Um, so Q factorial means that um, uh, for any D divisor, is Q criteria. So a multiple is criteria. And this is not a problem, meaning that one of the good things about MMP is that it preserves this property. You start with something smooth, which of course satisfies this property, and you lose smoothness, but you don't lose this property. Okay. And you also, whatever KLT, oh, sorry, whatever um, MMP we run, all the MMP we run today, we're not going to lose uh, uh, this property. So it's a good uh, category to work with. Okay, so let me remind you from yesterday. So we had F foliation X. Such that um, F is canonical. This is a short way to say canonical singularities. And KF is non F because otherwise there is nothing much for us to do. And what we saw yesterday is that we do, ex well, we didn't see it because it's not proven yet, but we do expect that there exists uh, so this theorem or conjecture depends on which case we are. It's a theorem in dimensional less equal than three. It's a conjecture in general. Um, we do expect that there exists an ample A such that KF plus A uh, such that, um, okay, I will use a slightly different notation compared to yesterday. I will include lambda inside A. So I will replace A by lambda A using the yesterday notation. So KF plus A is NEF. And uh, uh, there exists a ray R without saying too much what the ray means, but I'm sure um, it's clear, uh, of the border of the cone of curves. Such that uh, Kf plus A times a class C is equal to zero if and only if C belongs to R. So this is thanks to the uh, cone theorem. And then, thanks to the base point free theorem, we know that there exists a fabrication eta from x to uh, y. I probably used a different symbol yesterday such that um, basically all these curves here are contracted to a point. So such that Kf plus A times C um, is equal to zero. I should have seen a different way, but it's okay. And such if and only if F of C is a point. So in other words, uh, C is contracted to a point if and only if C it's a belongs to the array R. Okay, so basically we got rid of the back. Remember, of course, since A is ample, this automatically implies that Kf times C is negative. So it's a way to get rid of some of the curves which are negative. We want to make a Kf and F, so we want to get rid of curves which are negative with respect to Kf. Okay, so what happened next? So we distinguish now three cases. This is very, very standard. So the first case is that the dimension of Y is treated less than the dimension of X, which remember denoted by A, X, N. So I should have said here, sorry. Okay, and in this case, we have a fabrication. Um, I mean, by fabrication, I really mean a Fabrication something which is uh, uh, whose target is uh, lower dimension. Okay, so what happened in this case 
is that it was one of the um, cases we considered yesterday. So in particular, in this case, KF, it's possible to check, it's easy to check that KF is not uh, defective in this case. So in particular, F is root. And it's even better than that, because we know that we have this formation from X to Y, such that if F is a general fiber, then the extension of KF to F is ample. So in other words, it's a final fabrication. Okay, we can, uh, uh, we're gonna talk about this in a few minutes, but uh, the fibers are local echo centers. So in other words, we can restrict uh, the foliation to the fiber and um, we are gonna get something which is a final foliation. So the equivalent to what we mentioned yesterday. Okay. So in this case, we are done, we're happy. It's one of the output of our MMP. So it's the end of the story. I mean, there's nothing more that we need to do. So we stop here, okay? Okay, the second case. Yes. Oh, for the foliation, for the foliation, yes. I'll talk about this, don't, don't worry. It will be a little bit more clear in a few minutes. But yeah, what I mean is that there is a foliation F in such a way that this is the uh, restriction. I mean, it's like, a, um, there will be a foliation in such a way that this is just the KF, K of the of the um, restricted foliation. Uh, yes. Oh, they always tangent to the foliation, the strategy. Yes, that's part of the conjecture. So let's see, let's write it somewhere. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I like write it here. Um, so C is tangent. Well, that's part of the conjecture. And whenever this conjecture has been proven, uh, we also uh, have this notion. So every, it's okay for many cases, but in particular when n is less equal than three. Okay, so the second case, and again, uh, this is, I'm just using Mori algorithm. We just follow exactly what Mori algorithm is about, is that the dimension of Y is equal to the dimension of X because X is surjective, sorry. And also it's a fabrication. So the fibers are connected. So um, this means that in particular, it's a barrational morphism. In this case, we assume even more. So uh, the exception locus of uh, eta. So, so far, it just contradicts what it was written one. Now we assume a little bit more. I'm assuming that the exception locus of eta, which is the locus where eta is not an isomorphism, it's a device or it's an upper surface. Which, I mean, by standard the calculation is going to be a reducible uh, hypersurface because of the fact that this way it's extremo. But I don't want to get to do that. Okay, so the picture is very clear. We have a one variety. We have a divisor which is contracted to a lower dimension um, subvariety. So this is the, let me call it E. This is E. And this is the image of E. Everywhere else, these two varieties are isomorphic. Okay, so in this case, the situation is very good because Y is cofactorial. So this map is KF negative, which is a little bit stronger than what Carlo mentioned. In other words, that we have that FY is um, canonical, the induced foliation is canonical. This is easy to check. And so um, what it means is that we can really replace uh, X and F by Y and uh, FY. Okay, we have a nice foliation here. 
So instead of working with X uh, and the Fourier F, we work with Y and the Fourier F Y induced on Y, and uh, um, we continue this way. The other good news is that um, the Picard number, many numbers go down. So in particular, Picard number or the second Betty number is three to greater than the second Betty number Y. So this is good because this number is always positive. So it cannot drop infinitely many times. So this step here can only happen finitely many times. So we just, we are not done. We're not happy yet, but we just start all over again. We replace X with Y and we, we, we apply the theorem again. If, KY, if KFY is net, then we're done. Otherwise we continue with this algorithm again until eventually hopefully we'll stop. Okay, so, um, so repeat the algorithm. Okay, so this is good. So the tricky part is when this is not true. So in other words, eta is rational, but um, the codimension of the exceptional locus is greater or equal than two. So of course this can only happen if n is greater or equal than three. For surfaces, we're done. Uh, because, um, well, it's obvious. Um, I mean, it, we cannot contract a point to something smaller dimension. So the picture is something like this. We should think of X to be a threefold or higher dimension, and then the exceptional locus to be a, uh, something of a dimension at least two, and this is contracted to something of lower dimension. This is the best I can draw. Okay, so in this case, everything that I wrote here is not true, meaning that Y is not cofactorial. Never. And even worse, KFY is not to Cartier. Never. The reason is because we contract a curve, which is, this is at least a curve C on which KF is negative. So since this object has a isomorphic in co-dimension two, in, in co-dimension one, sorry, um, Kf1 times c will be equal to zero if, uh, sorry, Kf will be equal to zero multiplied by c if this was Cartier, which is not true. Okay, so we cannot apply what is written here. We cannot apply, um, we cannot just replace x by y because we're going to be in trouble. So what we want to do is to show that existence of flips. So I will define what a flip is. So a flip. It's a diagram that looks like this. So we already have our morphism from X to Y given from here. So a flip, it's a Barashian map, which is an isomorphic in dimension one, which is given by, from X to X plus, which is containing a diagram of this form here. Where of course I need to say something about X plus. So the first property is that uh, first of all, X plus is cofactorial. Then KF plus, KF plus which is where F plus is the foliation induced on X plus, uh, is, is uh, sorry, F plus, it's canonical. And more important, of course, so far I didn't say anything. I could take an isomorphism and I get what I want. So I need to say something more, um, which is the crucial part. The more important part is that um, for any curve which is contracted by this morphism here, KF plus is positive. So for any C plus, such that um, M plus of C plus, it's equal to five. Okay, so in other words, we had lots of curves on which KF is negative here. What we did is to have a similar variety where the opposite happens. In other words, every curve that is contracted is positive with respect to KF plus. So of course, the question is, why does this exist? And the second question is, even if you assume that this exists, uh, the idea would be to replace X by X plus. So let me write it here. Uh, so now we want to replace X by X plus. Uh, 
and f by f plus. Okay, so we improve the situation, right? Because um, um, we have fewer curves on which uh, kf is uh, negative, but how do we know that this process will terminate? We don't have something as nice as this. Okay, so the, um, the hope is that this does not happen in pretty many of times. Okay, so let me say what is known. So I maybe, I should, sorry, I should say that, uh, and we start again from here. Okay, so, yep. This one? Oh, we don't, we don't. No, it's actually topologically nothing much is happening. So that's why it's still an open problem. Even if for KX, it's still an open problem to know if this happens infinitely many times, we don't. Even in the case that I mentioned yesterday, where KX is big, we don't, no termination of flips. We don't know that this happens in pretty many times, even though we know the existence of mirror model, but we don't know that uh, this process is just a loop. It could be very much the case, yeah. Uh, so there is <laughs> Sorry, where? where F, F plus is, uh, yes, and F plus is canonical. F plus is the Fourier induced on X plus. Uh, Maybe let me write it. So they're birational. Uh, X and X plus, they're actually even in some of the dimension one. But anyway, they're birational. And so um, we have a foliation induced automatically. Okay, so let me tell you what we know about this. Or what? Let me make sure. a naive question. You said that uh, you would have less curves where KF plus is negative. It means nothing. Yes, it's just very vague, very vague. I mean, just because we got rid of one, but there's no reason to believe that infinite minus one is still infinite. So it could be creating another one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. I mean, the number of extreme arrays is more or less finite. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you could get rid of one, but create a few others, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the comment means nothing. Of course, philosophically, it looks good, right? Because we got rid of one. But yeah, it's, it's not clear what is happening. But in many cases, we do not know. We do know what happens. Sorry? How is the foliation with respect to something first? You said that there is one of the assumptions of the successor is still there on the mean order over one. Yeah, we lose this. We lose this as well, but it doesn't matter. It's not true that C plus is tangent to F plus. Well, Almost the case, but it's okay. I mean, we, we don't care. We only want to care about this curve, which are negative. So, uh, KF plus is going to be maybe if it's not if it's net if KF plus okay maybe let me write it here if KF plus is an F or if KFY was an F the guy before then we're done what is the new thing about the proof Yeah, I'm going to talk about this. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about soon. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so replying to your previous question. So we're done. It doesn't matter if you create one more curve on which is not tangent. It's not going to affect us at, at all. Yes. So the idea is to, uh, for the X plus, uh, then extend for other components. Yes, exactly. exactly. So, uh, so if it's an F, then we're done. Otherwise, there is going to be another curve. Let me call it uh, the noxy, such that k plus times c is negative, and then we start from here. So it's going to be we can assume it's tangent, we can assume everything else, and then we start from here. Okay, so what do we know before I start talking about proofs or whatever? Uh, what do we know? So existence of flips. So there are two problems. One is existence of flips. 
Everything else, it's okay. I mean, model of what we knew yesterday, uh, everything else is written in this blackboard um, holds true. So the only two things that we don't know is first of all, system flip and then termination, if this process continues forever. You can make a different type of contraction to uh, sorry, existence of contraction? No, 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 only dimension less equal than three. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but that's what I say. I'm assuming the theorem, the theorem is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, it's a theorem in dimension less equal than three, which is what we're going to focus today. It's a theorem for rank equal to the dimension, but it's very much open in any other case. So, I'm assuming, yeah, I was assuming everything we said yesterday, meaning all the conjecture. I'm assuming that to be true, but now we have an extra conjecture, which is existence of flips. And for this conjecture, again, it's okay if the rank is equal to the dimension. What else do we know? It's okay. So of course, dimension two, there are no flips and it's okay in dimension three. And this is what I'm gonna talk about today. This is uh, uh, myself and Callum. Um, yeah, like George mentioned yesterday, uh, Michael McQuillan has a different approach, uh, but um, it doesn't, as far as I know, it doesn't follow this diagram. It doesn't follow this strategy. And also, what else do we know? Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Okay, so about termination. So termination means uh, uh, there exists no infinite sequence of flips. So here it's gone, maybe. oh no, it's still here. Uh, then the button number is going down. Uh, from a topological point of view, the flip doesn't help much, meaning that there's nothing much that is happening. So, okay, what is known here, even this, it's, uh, even in this case, we don't know. So we know it in many, many cases, but uh, in full generality, only for rank equal to the dimension less or equal than three. Uh, this is due to Shokur of Kavamata. Um, Then for variety of general type, we know that a special sequence of flips terminates, which is good enough to produce a mirror model. But I'm not, and same story for rank equal to two with dimension three, but uh, then dimension three at rank two, it's okay because of a uh, result by uh, Calum, sorry, Calum and uh, Svaldi uh, and Roberto. I should remember the alphabet. And then dimension three at rank one, I think it's okay because of myself and Callum. Okay, so in, in conclusion, in dimension three, everything's okay. Okay, if you join all these toge results together, uh, in dimension three, all these algorithms um, works. So we can get, after finitely many steps, this is gonna produce a mirror model. And so we're done. Any questions so far? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yes, very good, yes, very good. Um, so this is new in any dimension. Existence of, yeah, sorry, that's right. Uh, existence of flip, it's okay for algebraically integrable population. Well, sorry, for any N, um, okay for algebraic integrable population. So there are a few names here, but I suppose we can put, I mean, in full generality, I think that it's a word. It's not a written down, but uh, we think we know how to do it. It's again with Callum, yes. Yes. Absolutely, yes. I don't see any reason why I should change, yes. I don't know a good example, but um, yeah. I don't see a good reason why this shouldn't this shouldn't happen. Yeah. In, uh, in the classical MMT, you have the MMT which is paving. Exactly, exactly. Do you uh, expect some sort of MMT paving? Yes, so that's how we prove at the beginning. We call them, uh, uh, in this case here, we did prove minimum model problem scaling. So we do believe it's always easier to prove minimum model problem scaling. So yeah, that's what we did at the beginning. Then with the, Roberto, they prove in full generality. 
So, yeah, that's right. So, if you if MMP for scaling would be okay, yes. So, for uh, algebraic integral foliation, if you take something big, then it's okay, yes, because just we use standard MMP in this case, and um, classic termination would imply termination in this case, yes. Thanks. Okay. Any other question? No, <laughs> I will be too off topic, but um, we basically, the idea is that instead of choosing random sequence of flips, we force the flip to be chosen in a special way, but really I don't want to go into that. I'm happy to talk about it as much as you want, but not now, sorry. Um, okay, so this is the end of the cute story about Biration geometry. Everyone loves the, you know, the program when they stop here and then, People start looking at the details and uh, not everyone continues to love it, but we have to do it because, uh, yeah, that's how theorems are proven. So what can we do? So now it comes the boring part. Well, not boring part, the technical part of the thing. Okay, so the thing that you always, we always hear whenever things get more advanced, is that we cannot work with varieties, but we need to work with pairs. So here is the same, we need to work. So I'm gonna talk about some idea of the proof. And the first idea is that we need to work with pairs. And the reason is always the same, because all the proofs, that I know use some kind of induction dimension. So if you want to use induction dimension, we need to restrict on some suitable sub varieties. And in order to create the sub varieties, we need to work with a more general category. Okay, so instead of work with X, we work with X delta, or instead of work with F, we work with F delta. So we'll explain what it means. So here F is a foliation. And delta, it's a Q device or R device. So it's a linear combination of wiper surfaces with rational coefficient, which are between zero and one. Okay, so we force some sub variety to be in this picture. So it would be easier for us to be in a category where the restriction of something is still in the same category. But of course, I need some assumption. I mean, I lose canonicity, so I need to give different notation. So the idea is that we want to make, whenever it's possible, Kf plus delta f. Okay, we want to go to model where Kf plus delta, where f is the um, induced foliation and delta is the induced divisor becomes NF. Of course, this is more general because you can choose delta equal to zero and we get the usual story. So everything that I wrote before, that we talked about before, holds in this, I mean, either it's a conjecture, it's a theorem about we either prove it in this generality or we expect to be true in this generality. Okay, so, but before doing that, I need to talk about the singularities. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna define um, discrepancies. So let's suppose that F is a Barasha morphism from a variety Y to X. Uh, sorry, uh, if you remember, for, for me, X is Q factorial, but if you don't like objects which are Q factorial, you can think of KF plus Delta to be Q here. So but I'm not gonna write this. Um, then we can write, Okay, now I'm gonna be in trouble. So KFY minus, in other words, write the difference between KFY and the pullback of uh, um, KF plus delta as the sum of divisors. I mean, whatever the error is, I'm gonna write it here. And the device, I'm gonna denote them EI. 
And the coefficient I'm going to denote by uh, A of EI of F delta. So when KF is equal to KX, I will use the notation X delta instead of F delta. Okay, so this, I'm not assuming that this is exceptional because I'm not including delta here. Okay, so this is just the error. Uh, well, of course, these are prime devices. Okay, this number here is called the discrepancy of F delta with respect to B. And we say that um, the pair F delta is, okay, so we have three words, canonical, but there will be more, actually even terminal, I might need, but it's okay. Um, uh, TLT or log canonical. If for any Barasha morphism like before, we have that this coefficient satisfies this property. So it's similar to the definition I gave canon of canonicity yesterday, just a little bit more general. So um, the first one is that this number here is greater or equal than zero for any EI. So this is canonical. KLT, it's a little bit strange, is greater than minus epsilon EI. I will remind you what this is again for any i. And the third one is greater or equal than minus epsilon i, where I'm assuming that the i ranges over all the possible uh, divisors over x. So let me remind you what is uh, this number. A column already defined it. Yes. In the case of canonical, do we ask that the i is exceptional? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, probably yes. Oops, ah, that's a mess. Um, yeah, I think so, yes. No, but no, but we're, we still need to, no, 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 for all of the line, right? Why? Oh, I see, because you might be in trouble. Uh, no, no, it's still true. No, no, it's still okay. It's okay. But then the outcome must be zero. If it's yeah. canonical, the outcome is zero. Oh, I'm already assuming that the coefficient with okay, yeah, yeah, I think so. Actually, I already assumed. Oh, I see for the other, yeah, okay, you're right. Sorry. Uh, the way I wrote it, yeah, is probably not the best way. Yeah, you're right. It's not the best way to write canonicity. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're right. So I should say canonicity only important when delta is equal to zero. I don't remember any good reason to have uh, uh, canonical singularity. So we can even forget about this word canonical if we want. This is solution about that. Okay, very good. Uh, so yes, let me remind you what uh, uh, this number is. So this number is equal to uh, zero if, uh, uh, EI is invariant. So with respect to the induced relation, and it's equal to one otherwise. Okay, very good. So now, unfortunately, I need to give one more definition. Um, so let's suppose that this is a log canonical pair. Then E is called log canonical place if uh, this number here 
is equal to zero, uh, it's equal to minus one, sorry, minus up to zero, sorry. Okay, so it only makes sense when we're talking about log canonical pairs or canonical pairs, it doesn't make sense for QLT pairs. Um, I will explain why we need these guys, but before doing that, let me give one more name. So a log canonical center is the image of a log canonical place. So sigma inside X is called a local canonical place, a local canonical center for F delta, of course. Uh, if um, uh, sigma is the image of E, well, of course, F is a barrational morphism which extracts E, and of course, E is a local canonical place. Okay, so you can ask me, why do I need these guys? And this is, is the same for standard MMP. The reason why we need these guys, local canonical center, is that they're good to do induction. Why? Because a junction works at least conjecturally on this object here. So let me remind you very quickly what Kavamata subjunction says. So I will not spend too much time to explain, but uh, I will try just to, to justify Kavamata uh, subjunction. Why we need to study these objects. So it says that if sigma, it's a local canonical center for x delta. So when I say x delta, I mean f equal to tx. Of course, Kavamata didn't use this language, but uh, that's what I mean. Um, and uh, it's an Pocky device. Okay, this is a, tec a technical assumption, but you can take a as more as you want. Then kx plus delta plus a restricted to sigma is equal to uh, the normalization of sigma, or I take a minimal local canonical center. Okay, let me take a minimum. Uh, we're minimal with respect of the inclusion. So, and this is gonna be automatically uh, normal. This is a theorem by Ambro. Um, or if you want to just replace sigma by the normalization. So this is equal to K sigma plus delta sigma. Where delta sigma is the different, it's the same object that column defined for upper surfaces and it's effective. And there are many, many theorems. Like for instance, if this is log canonical, this is also log canonical and so on. So this is why we like log canonical centers because if you, if you just replace, if you just take the x and to sigma, we don't get k sigma, of course. So what we like about log canonical center is that we don't end up in a different category. And for foliation, the story is very similar. Um, okay, so there is a remark. Which is um, related to what um, was asked before. That is, uh, if sigma it's a leaf, it's an algebraic leaf, or if sigma it's invariant, let me see. That's invariant. Sorry, I'm using George notation. Uh, if sigma is invariant, then uh, sigma it's a log canonical center for um, F delta. I'm assuming that F delta is log canonical. Okay, I'm assuming that F delta is log canonical. Um, okay, so this is good because for instance, the curve that we had, the flipping curve, it's always a log canonical center for this pair, which is good news for us. Uh, the bad news is that for X delta, it's easy to show that X delta only emits finitely many, at most finitely many, emits only at most finitely many local canonical centers. This is not true for foliation. This is sometimes a good news, sometimes a bad news. To the inclusion. So in other words, if you have the two local canonical center, one inside the other, this is no mean. Well, this is for sure no mean. <laughs> this could be. A point inside the it could be a local canonical center. Yes. Every point isn't a. No, 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 no. For instance, take a product of uh, something 
by a curve, you're not gonna find any point which is local conical center. X is always local conical center. My point is almost, well, no, no, sorry, it's not almost there. It could be, like for instance, if you have something like that, it could be a local conical center. But um, you could have, for instance, okay, this is an example, P2 and a smooth curve. This is a local conical center, but there is no one zero dimensional local conical center. Thanks. Okay, so this is not true for foliation, which is a little bit of a problem when we prove termination, but uh, uh, there are way around that. Uh, okay, I don't have much time. So let me explain the idea. Of, of the proof of existence of flips. I should say that the way we prove uh, things is very different from what I described yesterday. So um, we first, but this is happening quite a lot of times even Cartistic P and so on. Uh, we first prove existence of flips, existence of flipping contraction, and then we prove uh, um, the base point fit theorem. Uh, but nevertheless, it's just a technical detail, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. So, um, I want to spend a little bit of time to study the case of a threefold. Uh, I'm going to start with rank equal to two. I will soon uh, replace this picture by rank equal to one. And I'm going to take a canonical foliation. Such that uh, there exists a curve C which is a flipping curve. I will explain what the flipping curve means, but it should be clear, uh, such that kf and c it's uh, negative. And um, if we take, this is extremal. So extremal means it's, that it's a ray, it's a, well, in convex geometry, it's an extremal ray in the cone of curves. Um, and more important in the induced morphism, is um, uh, it's one dimensional. So the union of all the curves C prime, which are inside R, it's one dimensional. So I should say a remark, of course, this object here is not empty because it always contains C. It's not completely obvious that it's uh, Zariski closed, uh, but um, it, it's possible to show that it's a risky closed. So if it's two dimensional, it means that we're looking for a divisorial contraction. So something which has exceptionally exceptional locus uh, divisor. If it's one dimensional, we expect to have a flip. Okay, so there's only a bunch of curves, finitely many curves on which, um, which lie in this ray. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. But every extremal ray is general. Yeah, you're right. Yes, thanks. So tangent to x. Thank you. So is it obvious that if c is tangent, then all the other c primes in the ray just are negative? It can be proven, yes. The argument if it's not tangent, then. I mean, of course, if it's not one dimension, it's not true, right? If you have a surface, you have lots of curves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so if you have, if it's not just an extreme, if, if it's not flipping contraction, it's not true. Uh, but in this case, it's true. For flipping contraction, it's true. I mean, you could have a P2 map into a point. Then, of course, you have lots of curves, and many of these are not tangent. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're in dimension three. So these curves, there are only finitely many of such curves uh, if it's one dimensional. And we can even assume it's reducible for the time being because there's no where the problem lies. Um, okay, so what is the hope? Which even now, I don't think we know whether it's true or not. The hope is to find a delta 
such that x delta is not canonical. And kx plus delta mc is negative. If we can do that, then we can use uh, just existence of flips uh, in the classical minimum of the program. And so we're done. Whatever classical existence of flips means. Um, the hope, I mean, is not something we know how to do. We don't know how to produce such a delta. But what we can do is that if there are enough separatrices, if there are enough um, invariant surfaces which contain the curve C, then at least we can find delta satisfy this property here. Okay? So the idea is to find invariant surfaces uh, SI without specify what uh, the index is. So uh, I, it's uh, one, two, and so on. Such that delta, we can choose delta to be equal to the sum of SI. So in other words, this is true. Uh, of course, C contains, uh, such that C is contained inside this SI, and um, this is true. So again, if this is true, then um, we are a little bit happy. We're not completely happy because uh, we still need to prove that something is log canonical, okay, in order to apply the standard MP. Um, but there are two problems. So the first problem the first problem is that. Uh, this SI, I mean, this is what mentioned, it was mentioned by Carlo on Monday. On Monday uh, there's no reason to believe uh, that this SI exists in the algebraic category. Okay, this is the first problem. And the second problem, there is no reason to believe uh, that uh, the pair, even if we assume that there are a lot of these uh, surfaces, um, there is no reason to believe that this is well behaved. Okay, so for it happens that um, in for rank equal to two, this problem is a little bit easier. So we we suffer less for this. The problem to consider is that okay. This is not solvable. We don't know how to solve it on X, but we can work on a formal neighborhood of uh, C inside X. So we assume that the cursive X is the formal neighborhood uh, neighborhood, sorry, of uh, C in X. And then in this case, Thanks to the work that um, Callum mentioned, plus some uh, things that Callum did, uh, we are really able to find such a side. Okay, what is the problem? What is the new problem? The new problem is that we lose almost everything. We even lose cofactoriality. There is no reason to believe that even if X is cofactorial, um, this object here is cofactorial. Okay, there is another problem, which is even worse, probably, is that. Um, um, okay, we would like to run MMP, but there is no MMP for formal schemes, as far as we know. Now, in the last one year, there are a lot of new MMP in the analytic category, but still, I don't think there is any MMP for formal schemes. And probably it's even for, so I don't know. There is no MMP for formal schemes. Okay, so this gives us some problems. Um, so, okay, I would like to talk a little bit, I don't have much time, but I would like to talk a bit more about the rank equal to one case, but where we have exactly the same kind of statements, but, uh, uh, but it's even a little bit more tougher to produce this SI. So let me just say that we solve this in our particular case, we're able to deal with this.
using um, a generalization of Artin approximation, which is due to Arctic. Okay, so what we do is this. We do produce this SI in the um, um, former category. Um, and then using these results, and this, we show that they're not canonical um, in this category, whatever it means. And then we show that this can be approximated by uh, subvariate inside X, which are not anymore tangent, they're not anymore invariant, but they satisfy the properties we think here. Okay, so there's a bit of work to do, but uh, this was the idea uh, in this paper. Any question? Did I lose everyone? Well, maybe not the people in the first row. But... Okay, so I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, these ideas in the rank equal to one case. So we have exactly the same idea, the same problems, but it's even harder to produce a sign. Yeah, 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 that's what I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the way we construct this SI, this kind of uh, servo, and then some uh, refined version of this due to Kalman's thesis, and then some version we have in our paper. Yes, that's right. Here you're doing something here, something different. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. Here, we don't have kind of servo. So we need to come out with a new way to construct this SI. So now I'm going to do the case uh, dimension three and rank equal to one. Yes. So for surface is much easier because we use a junction. So the point is that, okay, I'll talk a little bit about this for rank equal to one. Actually, my plan was to talk a lot about this, but uh, okay, for rank equal to two is much easier because if you think about that, uh, the, uh, the leaves are the two dimensional. So there are not many choices. And those choices happen to be uh, log canonical by a junction. The problem about, uh, Rank one is that we have too many choices. So if I choose random, let me write it here. If we take even just one uh, S invariant, then in general, and I'm gonna give an example, X is, uh, XS is not low canonic in general. I will give an example in one moment. Why? Because um, think for instance, our morphism from a three photo surface. And think of, um, sorry, there are too many eyes, uh, that. So think, suppose that the foliation is, is induced by this morphism. So think about any curve C inside, uh, there are too many C, so let me call it a B curve, which is highly singular. So something like this. Well, this is not highly singular, but something like that. <laughs> I'm not good at drawing picture. And take the pre-image. This is invariant, of course. But for sure, it's not true that, I mean, I didn't have any hypothesis on, a, on B. I can choose a B to be as single as you want, and this is gonna be invariant. So there is no reason to believe that this pair is gonna be log canonical. Yeah. Okay, so we definitely need to, for rank equal to two, we are lucky because there are very few upper surfaces. And if F delta is log canonical, they have, we can prove that they are log canonical. But here we need to be careful about how we choose S. And the question is, how do we choose S? Yes. So, okay, I was planning to talk about this, but um, I suppose I will not be able to do it. Uh, I will just say, how do we find this S in rank equal to one? So yes, in rank equal to two, uh, it's a consequence of kind of servo. Um, in rank equal to one, what we do is this. So we would like to, so we have X to Y, it's our flipping contraction. In other words, it's our morphism induced by uh, KF, um, which contracts a curve. What we would like to do, so let's suppose that C is mapped to a point. So on Y, we have lots of, um, um, Invariant of upper surface that pass through the point. It's very easy to find invariant upper surface that pass through this point. 
because it's much easier to take a surface that passes through a point rather than a surface that contains a curve. We want the surface to contain a curve. This is very, very hard. But to contain a point, it's a much more relaxing uh, condition. So what we would like to do is to take T invariant. So this is the idea on Y. And then work with the three transform. What is the problem? The problem is that we know nothing about KFY. If you remember, KFY was not uh, Cartier. It's not Q Cartier. Sorry, KFY, sorry. It's not Q Cartier. So this method does not give us a foliation nice on Y. Okay, so the first thing we do is to work with foliation, which have, uh, so it's like um, non torsion free. In other words, we have a single locus, which has got dimension one. So what we do, since this is the first step, is to show that there exists something like a complement. So we show that there exists an upper surface degree theta and zero, such that, okay, first of all, F delta, uh, sorry, FD, well, it's not going to be nice because um, uh, it's going to be yeah pretty ugly. But um, as the property that if you have plus d, it's purely equivalent uh, over uh, y to zero. Okay, so this is something we construct. Okay, using the fact, I mean, basically it's like lifting and complement, more or less. This is very similar to the lifting and complements. So now the reason why this is good is because instead of work with F, we can work with this pair here. And this is induced by something which is nice on Y. So there exists the Y, which is nothing but the image of D on Y, such that now KFY plus BY is Cucatier. It's actually going to be the same singularity as uh, F delta. FD, sorry. Okay, so now what is the next step? The next step is that now we can work with this foliation, with this pair. Okay, it's a pair where the lo lo single locus is called dimension one, so it's pretty bad. But nevertheless, we are able to find all these upper surfaces. With respect to um, FD, oh, FY, DY, sorry, on Y, and containing passing through the point, passing through FC. Is there any concern on the singularities of FD? Or... Uh, yeah, we assume that it's log. I mean, we want that to be log canonical. So. Okay, so now the idea is that at least I have some upper surface to work with. Before I couldn't have any, I didn't have an upper surface. So we take, so S1 and S K, so maybe, sorry, I should have used S prime one and S prime T, sorry about that, uh, because I want to call S1 and S K the induced uh, surfaces on, uh, sorry, Y, on X. Sorry, I'm running out of time. Okay, and I didn't solve the second problem. Remember, we had two problems. The first problem was uh, that this might not be log canonical, and it's not log canonical in general. For sure, it's not log canonical. But at least I found a lot of uh, uh, surfaces which contain C. Okay, so maybe Callum will talk about this. The good news is that if you look at this example, the log canonical center of XS is never zero dimensional. It must be one dimensional because it's the pre image of uh, uh, this curve into a three fold. So it will always be one dimensional. And this picture always happens, meaning that although this is probably not log canonical, the corresponding pair is not log canonical, what happens is that um, more or less the minimal log canonical center is a curve. 
uh, after scaling. And so this is what allows us to use uh, a junction, uh, sub junction um, and work with them. So, sorry, I'm gonna stop. I little bit solved the first problem and then maybe Callum will solve the second problem tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much, to be continued. Do you actually work downstairs? Yes, we do. So we have what we do is uh, in, on uh, on why we don't understand quite the picture. So what we do is just uh, think of why inside some smooth variety, and that we work on the smooth variety, and then we restrict. So you're going to use the normal form for vector field with things on the Pretty much, yeah. That's, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. We use the class. Yeah, I mean, I'm hiding lots of details, but of course, we use the fact that we know very well what the singularities appear. We, and so, in particular, yeah, we we use linear algebra in some sense, like Michael was saying. What is the notion of invariance when we have a? Oh, fair. Um, okay, at the end, it will be an invariant for Fy. For yeah, for Fy. But the definition of invariant. I mean, if you look at the definition of invariant upper surface, is something like uh, some map factors to something. I don't know if you've ever seen a definition of invariant. So usually when you talk about invariant, and invariant it's invariant. If, uh, when you look at the F inside the X, so you restrict to Sigma and then this, uh, this factorize to this. This is what invariant means. Uh, when you have a pair, you, you use poles. This is the idea, of course, I'm cheating. But on the smooth lock is fine, and it's an upper surface. So on the general point, it's okay, yes. How do you construct the complement? Okay, so the way we do it uh, is that we find first a surface that contain S, and the surface is pretty much any uh, sufficiently ample surface which contains C, and then we lift from the surface. So we study the restriction of all we have on this surface, and then uh, we lift it from the surface, more or less, yeah. That's right, exactly, yes, exactly, yes. Yes. Any other questions? I have probably already asked this question a thousand of times. That's true. Right. <laughs> I hope I give always the same answer. Could I mention one case? Mm -hmm. Do you actually have an example where you need uh, the surface to be formal and not convergent? I mean, there are examples where you cannot find uh, non convergent, uh, uh, maybe you know by heart. Uh, uh, but you can find non-convergent upper surface, right? But for flipping curves, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, we need to work with the mask yeah. So yeah, it's a we're not sure you can Next time I will think of it. <laughs> 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 and you said that McQuillan has a different approach on building flips. Yeah, it builds flaps. <laughs> does it give you perspectives on classical flips for varieties in general? Or is I don't it... know, maybe, I don't know. I was not able to prove it, but I don't know. I mean, the point, I don't know if I should say that, um, I mean, the MMP is a powerful machinery, right? So, um, yeah, I shouldn't say that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <Exactly. It's not laughs> <laughs> okay, let me stop here, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? No, let's thank Paul again. So, whoever comes to lunch here with me and then to the high, we meet you.